the belief that there's someone out there special for you, right? Some preordained person, uh, your twin flame, karma, God, whatever, right? Is very dangerous because for the most part, now I'm not going to spend too much time on the like the soundness of this idea philosophically. I might make a quick comment at the end about whether I think it's bullshit or not and why. Um, I'm more focused on the practicality of believing it. And even if it's true, you still need to train your dating skills and you still need to go out and find them. They're not just going to knock on your door magically. Um, there's got to be some free will involved here. And also, even if you do meet them, you need to be able to have a good relationship with them. Let's say this idea of yours is actually true. You still need to communicate with them, flirt with them, seduce them. You can't just sit. What if you were chose to sit around and do nothing, right? Well, they would get bored of you. Or, you know, what if like you were super stubborn around them and you couldn't problem solve with them and deal with, you know, disagreements? Like you need to be able to have some relationship skills, even if you meet this magical person, right? That is just you guys just mesh so well. OK, that's what I want to address in this video is why the idea itself could hurt a relationship even if you did meet that one special person right so let's go over that when you are learning dating skills and relationship skills what you were doing is you were going out you were approaching women hopefully in real life and you're not just swiping right on a fucking dating app well, i'm gonna meet the love of my life on tinder okay good luck buddy and uh or even if you do meet them on a dating app you have to meet them in real life eventually right so you go on a date you have to spend the next few hours and then probably a different set of few hours because you're probably gonna have multiple dates right unless you were a seduction king and you get her on the first date but even if you get her on the first date you still want to see her again right she comes over get her on the first date i mean you fuck on the first date okay because we're adults here right i'm gonna take it slow and do it. Yeah. okay sure yeah <laughs> the reason why you're going after her is because she has a vagina and the reason she's going after you because you have a dick it is not the end all be all of the relationship there's obviously a lot of aspects of friendship and uh, and um you know caring about each other and helping each other through life but the the prominent reason you were going after her is because she has a vagina right it's the reason you don't end up with your best friend because you're not gay and if you are well then you go after men or women because you feel your desire to that, right? So sex is going to be <laughs> a very important part of the relationship because it is the distinguishing quality of why it's a relationship versus a friendship with a friend, right? So you're going to be having sex with them, dating them, talking to them, hanging out with them. There are going to be moments where the relationship can progress or it can degress, meaning... They can gain attraction for you, lose attraction for you. They can gain trust. They can lose trust in you. And they can develop a connection with you or lose a connection. All right? So this happens from the very first moment you meet them until the time that one of you separates with the other or one of you dies, which is just another separation. Right? There is always going to be a flux of these three aspects of attraction, lust, love a connection and trust uh it could range from you know i trust this person with my secrets i trust this person with my life and my safety i trust this person with my time and my energy and my money and that you know if if i help them out they're also going to you know help me out because it's a partnership you know it's not a one-way selfish relationship trust as you interact with this person they are going to be observing your body language your eye contact your facial expressions how you are like communicating with them and your actions and your words are going to tell them either implicitly or explicitly something good meaning it's making them more attracted to you the way you act the way you move the way you talk it's sexy it's attractive right nobody in this fucking world is like well i have a twin flame soulmate and they're not attracted to them like it's some right we always forget about the practical aspects of our uh you know very idealistic nebulous ideas of fate and oh yeah you know there's a right person out there for me 
And what that means for you is she's got a fat ass and big old titties or whatever it is you fucking like, right? <laughs> right? If you're an ass man and you get a girl with a flat ass and big titties, it's like, oh, this is this is who was preordained by God to be with me. She's fucking shit. You know, like it's, I mean, she's really pretty, but like I'm, I'm more of an ass guy or vice versa, right? It's always exactly how you want it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, it's very absurd, but you know, whatever, right? We're going with it as if it's possibly true. And uh, so, you know, they have what you like in terms of physicality, but also personality. They're nice. Like, what if your twin flame's a piece of shit? Like, they're really hot, but they're a piece of shit. Or they're a really great person, but they're ugly as fuck, right? It's, one, it's always one of those possibilities. Well, attraction is obviously more than just that, right? Yeah, of course, right? It's their personality. It's, it's their communication skills, you know, or, or if they're interesting to be around. Maybe they're dumb as a rock or you're dumb as a rock and you're, or you're fucking annoying, you know, you have a really dumb, annoying sense of humor, and it pisses people off, right? But you, it's me, and I'm not going to change myself or anyone else, right? Or um, you're you're incredibly bad at listening, and you don't listen to anything people say. Uh, I have several clients like this. One in particular, God, he's just god awful at fucking listening to anything anyone says, and I tell him he's fucking bad at it, and then he wonders why he's getting fucking rejected. I'm like, well, dude, it's because you're you're a snobby fucking prick. And you don't listen to what people say and you just you're off in your own la la land because everything's been handed to you in your life. But he doesn't get it, right? Um But uh but yeah, so you have to learn these things, right? You have to have experiences that will kick your ass, right? Meaning you gotta go through a lot of rejections. You got to go through um, heartbreaks. You got to go through close calls. Like everything was great until bam, happened, right? Uh, I have one client who he's learning so slow, right? But he's so fucking dedicated, but he jokes that he's Sisyphus, right? Just rolling the boulder up the hill and then, you know, rolls back down and you got to do it again. What I'm trying to explain to him is he actually has a destination. It's not falling down. It's just, you know, he has ups and downs, but he is progression quite slow but he's finally hit a good spot he finally got some dates and he's been kind of dry on some dates for a while um, but the reason why is because he's a total social beginner i mean he's he's he doesn't really have any social skills he's just a very uh, kind of as a personality he's like white rice just very like just plain like he's just a plain dude nothing really exciting about him and I explained to him, I was like, well, you know, at least you're not fucked up like a lot of people that I know, right? You don't, you, because, you know, traumas tend to make people interesting. Prime example, fucking A right here. But, um, you know, you, you haven't had anything to mold you, which is good in one sense. You're not fucked up. But in another sense, you're pretty boring and you're not sexy, right? But the good thing is that we have a solid foundation to work upon. We can, you know, intentionally build your character rather than, you know, you just stumble into it through, through trauma and bad shit but his progress is slow right so he has to go out and get rejected again and again and again and again and he has to learn his lessons almost mechanically he's not really on the spectrum it doesn't seem like it you know he's just plain and doesn't have a lot of social skills but he has to learn things kind of slowly because that's how his mind works he's very methodical but not to the sense like i said i don't think he's on the spectrum at all but in his efforts he is slowly gaining these experiences that are going to give him lessons on when he's not sexy, when he's not building a connection, when he's reading her wrong, he's reading the energy wrong, he's reading the conversation wrong. And then I point that out to him and he goes, oh, okay, right. This is part of the practice is making a lot of mistakes. But if you have this idea that there is this one special person out there for you, just perfectly you know, she she crosses your T's and dots your I's, right? You're going to meet her and there's never going to be any issues. She just is a perfect fit with you, right? You're the perfect amount of a homebody and she's the perfect amount of a busy bee and you guys, you know, balance each other out and this... Really, you're never going to have any arguments. You're never going to have any disagreements. There's never going to be a moment where, you know, you're you're kind of not very attractive to her or maybe she's not attractive to you. Um, you're never going to, you know, maybe she puts on some, some weight. Maybe she, you know, 
um, puts in less effort in the relationship or vice versa. You start to put less effort in the relationship because once you're together, you're like, oh, well, here, I'm home. I'm settled. I found my one. Well, I don't have to try anymore. That's kind of the underlying secret, dark secret behind my twin flame is I think that it is a deep desire to have something handed to us and it doesn't take any work. That's what I think it is. I'm going to meet this perfect person who doesn't require any work whatsoever. We don't have any problems and it's going to be perfect. And so it's easy and I can do whatever I want. And, and, and I still get my dick sucked or, you know, I get pussy or I have someone to cuddle with or vice versa. Girl, you know, I get to get fucked. I get to suck dick. I get to like have great sexual experiences, but also have someone who cares about me and also have someone who's going to support me and blah, 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 blah. Right. Both sexes suffer from the same fucking dumbass fallacy. Right. All the bitter men in the world and all the bitter women in the world, we should throw them in a room together so they can, you know, just be with each other because you, you have the same exact ideas. Right. And I think that twin flame soulmate philosophies are just extensions and eventually lead people to be bitter. Right. A lot of those bitter people are probably entitled little spoon fed bitches who expect, you know, to find their special one. Right. And uh, it, it's just laziness um, reified, right? Meaning it's turned into an idea, right? It's just a it's just a trait that manifests itself into an idea of entitlement and being handed your special person on a platter by God or by karma or whatever. That's what I think it is, because even like I said, even if it's true. You end up with that person and you don't know how to have a relationship with them because you've never learned these skills because people who usually believe in that one special one are not out there training, going on dates, getting rejected, getting ghosted, getting flaked on, having to flake people, having to ghost people, having to learn how to communicate boundaries, how to, you know, you start off the relationship kind of, or you know, guys, guys are dating, but then things fall off. You know, how do I, you know, all right, should I be dating multiple people at the time? Dealing with ethical questions of dating, right? Can I talk to multiple women at a time? Should I be okay with a girl talking to multiple men at a time? Um, you know, what what is allowed in a relationship? What you know is, am I being jealous and insecure, or are they genuinely, you know, being fucking shady and untrustworthy? You know, these these are questions you have to ask in the practice. They're very easy in theory. Right. Like when I was younger, I did have these ideas like, OK, well, you shouldn't be jealous. You shouldn't be insecure. And then I allowed people in my life, <laughs> girls who were just hoes. Right. They, and, and they just hide their ho hoedry behind. Oh, don't be jealous. Don't be insecure. But then if the opposite happens, oh, OK, all of a sudden they have boundaries and you're disrespecting them. And it's like so in your face, obvious once you see it, that they're just like evil hypocrites. Right. Or you yourself or the evil hypocrite. That's the sh really shittiest part in dating journeys to learn is that all these like complaints you have about, you know, like all those bitter guys who have complaints about women. Oh, women are hoes, 304s, and they just lie and cheat. And yeah, right. Put this guy in a situation where he has multiple bad bitches who want him and he's dating one. See if he doesn't cheat. See if he doesn't lie. See if he isn't like spinning plates as they call it, right? He's got one girl over here, one girl over here, but then he's complaining that girls are doing the same thing to him. Fuck off, dude. Suck a dick. Fucking hypocrite, right? And once you realize, right, you can do that and still only want a girl who wants to be loyal to you. That's fine. That's just a desire you have. But don't complain that girls are that way when you yourself are literally a manifestation of what you think is wrong. Just be like, yeah, that's just what I want. You know, I want to date a bunch of girls and then find a girl who's going to be like only for me and conservative. And then I'm going to, you know, but you better fucking uh, be loyal to her or you're just a hypocrite, right? So... There's a lot of these lessons that you learn, the dark sides of women, the dark sides of yourself and other men, right? Hypocrisies that you have to face, contradictions in, in your moralities and in your approaches to dating and just straight up fucking skill issues. Just You're just boring, bro. Like I that one client or, you know, oh, I'm getting rejected and I can't get it. Well, it's because this and this and that you're fucking annoying. You got an annoying laugh. You have a dog shit sense of humor. You don't know how to know when you're making a girl uncomfortable. Um, or you you miss obvious signs from women. You know, she's basically holding up a neon sign saying, I'm ready to fuck you. And then you're a fucking pussy and won't, won't make a move. It's like, dude, you're just, you're just bad. And it's okay. 
That's how you learn anything. Whether it's a video game, a card game, a sport, dating, business, finance, painting, I don't know. Anytime you learn something, you're going to fuck up. Okay, same thing with dating. But when it comes to this, people are just like, it's people are uniquely ignorant when it comes to dating. It is one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen. There's so many other aspects in life. Well, money is kind of like this too. People just like expect they're going to get rich and it's like, okay, you know, and then they hate people who are wealthy. But I think even with money, people to a some certain extent just understand like, yeah, I'm just not doing anything that's going to get me a lot of money. Like you're not going to suddenly make 500K working at McDonald's. It's just not going to happen. Or, you know, being a low grade engineer, like maybe at some really super high level, right? You might normally hit six figures, but are you going to be rich, rich, rich? Well, yeah, you got to probably run your own business or something, right? But with dating, this is the one aspect that I have seen such a high level of delusion, of of just self-delusion and, and dumbass ignorance, like dudes who clearly struggle with women. And then you kind of talk to them, they're like, and they have this attitude like, oh, yeah, you know, I got, I got it under control. And I'm like, clearly the fuck not, because exhibit fucking A, your life, bro. Like, what's going on? Right? Everyone has troubles, right? You know, even the the most sexy, cool guy in the world is going to have issues, right? With with who the fuck knows, with picking up girls, with a relationship, with a marriage, right? Everyone's going to have issues, right? But if you're not, like, at all getting what you want, then clearly you, you, you need some to do some work. And a philosophy that... Presupposes you have some preordained person who's going to end up in your life is certainly not going to help you train those skills that are going to make you a good lover and boyfriend and husband once you do meet this supposed you know soulmate. But here, here's my comment on it. Right, philosophically, it's very hard to like tell you why it's dumb. Right, we'd have to learn your your fundamental ideas on how you think the universe works essentially. Right, because you're presupposing a lot when you talk about soulmates. Right, you're you're thinking that someone or something is manifesting someone in your life and that there is a guarantee you're going to get it and i'll just tell you real fucking raw and this is going to get you know pretty dark but you think that you're suddenly one day just going to meet who you want and this is what i tried to explain to that one client who's learning very slow who feels like sisyphus and i'm like dude there's no other way there's no way for you to get better except for the way that you're going and i'm pointing out to you exactly what you're doing wrong you're just a slow learner Okay, well, fuck, we just have to fucking accept it. Either you learn slow or don't learn at all and don't make any progress, right? There's no other way than just through. You just have to do the work and make mistakes. And then and hopefully you do have someone who knows what they're talking about, which I am helping him and he has finally improved, right? But he's just learning slowly. But that's the only way. But some people aren't going to do that work and they think that they're preordained to find someone. But I'll be honest with you, dude. Here's the dark part. You don't know that. There is a very strong possibility that instead of I'm going to meet the one person for me and we're going to live happily ever after, next week, next month, next year, in 10 years, you're going to be torn to pieces and mangled in a car accident. And as you know, you're watching your limbs just rip off of you and then you bleed out. Are you going to be thinking, oh, yeah, there was that one special one for no, dude, you're, you're just fucking dead. <laughs> like that was your fucking karma. That was your twin flame was the fucking semi truck, you know, disintegrating you, right? Or slowly dying of fucking cancer or, you know, you, you even let's not get too dark, like, or actually this might even be just as dark or worse, right? Die in a car wreck or meet a girl who you think is the one for you, but she's actually a rancid piece of shit and she cheats on you and, you know, emotionally tortures you and, you know, you have a kid who's not yours and you don't find out until 10 years later. And like, who the, like, there are so many horrible things that could go wrong, right? And if you think that this is all just being preordained and there's not any free will involved, well, fuck me, dude. I mean, I guess you're just a, a, a robot who is a slave of their, of, of either some god who's clearly fucking evil if, if you're thinking that they literally preordain everything, right? Or, um which is not the case, luckily. Uh, or, you know, 
you you just have no control over what's going to happen in your life. There's just fate based on, I don't know, maybe you're a materialist and you think that every atom has already been pre preordained and every path has kind of been uh, already calculated. It's like, okay, well, if that's the case, there's no convincing you, right? But there's a, these ideas. You might be thinking, well, I don't think that at all. You know, da, da, da. A lot of us have these ideas. And you'd be surprised how deeply ingrained it is that we believe things are going to happen uh, irregardless. Irregardless? Regardless. I think that's a it's very superfluous. Irregardless. I think it's just regardless. Yeah, it's just regardless. <laughs> regardless of our actions, right? Your actions have consequences. If I take these glasses and I move them to this hand, this action would not have happened had I not introduced some free will into it, okay? So even if you have a situation where I just happen to walk this way this day to work and a beautiful girl crosses my path and she's your twin flame, right? Ooh, like, I don't know. She looks at you. You look at her. There's the smile, fucking butterflies in your stomach and your chest is fluttering like a butterfly wings or whatever the fuck, right? You still need to take your happy little ass from point A to point B, which is do 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 do. I walk and I'm like, "What's up, girl? Nice ass. You, I think God put you in my life so that we could fuck." <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's like God sitting out there, like, "Yeah, I really want this dude to get some pussy." <laughs> it's just like kind of fucking stupid, you know? It's like, yeah, I made this little monkey and I just want him to go get some pussy, you know? It's like, what? Right? Um, <laughs> what a dumb idea, twin flames, right? Soulmates, fucking retarded. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The entire universe is conspiring to get your dick sucked. Okay, buddy. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The entire universe is conspiring for you to be lonely and sit at home and jerk off. And by universe, I mean you. Um, which is nothing wrong in every once in a while, you know, get your rocks off, but you should be also going out and approaching girls, right? Jerking off's awesome, but, you know, pussy's better and lips are better and the inside of a mouth is much better. So um, you got to have the skills to actually go up and approach her. You got to have the skills to actually, like, take her on a date or text her and da 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 There's a lot of steps involved, okay? So disabuse yourself of this, of any latent, deep-down beliefs that things are just going to happen in your favor. Right. And I am a believer in karma. But karma is a lot more complicated than just like this is going to happen no matter what. There is a huge amount of free will involved. Um, but the getting into the uh, extent of that is a totally different discussion. and way outside the scope of this um, video. This is mo mainly just focused on the practicality of any soulmate viewpoints and how a lot of us probably actually have them deep inside. And the way you know it's deep inside of you is when you think things are going to happen without any movement from you, essentially. But if you are making the movements and you are trying and you are mindfully training yourself, right? You're not just winging it because that client who feels like Sisyphus sometimes, he kind of admitted to me and confessed to me. He's like, sometimes I kind of just approach to approach. I'm not really present. I was like, okay, well, if you're not intentionally trying to improve, then of course you're not going to improve. Same thing. So... um, Examine your belief systems, and if you have any latent, you know, lurking, hiding little beliefs that you think, you know, you're going to find a girl that's just right for you without any sort of trial or tribulation, I would remove it as fast as possible and get back to the idea uh, or jump into the idea if you've never really taken responsibility for your life that you're going to have to work your way to it. And it's probably going to involve a lot of tears and a lot of rejection, but good thing is once you get there you're there so uh if you are interested in learning those skills of course just watch this channel if you're interested in learning from me personally um i'm not magic as i just confessed to you with that client who's really a slow learner um a lot of it has to do with the raw materials i'm dealing with you know where you how you come to me but i will get you to improve uh how fast or slow it depends on your ability to absorb information and your willingness to work hard um, cause overall I'm a pretty fucking awesome coach. I make mistakes, but for the most part, I'm pretty awesome. And I'm going to identify what your issue is probably the first time we talk. And then the rest of the coaching is just explaining to you the same thing, but in more detail in different contexts. And of course, other unique things and, you know, little ideas and techniques here and there. 
um, but molding you into what I think is an ideal form of you uh, that is still uniquely you, but attractive to women. And uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of it, you get better, right? Now, are you going to be as good as me or some other guy who's really good with girls? You know, probably not. I mean, even if you hire Tom Brady to coach you for 10 years, are you going to be the next Tom Brady? Well, still unlikely, right? But you're going to be really fucking good, right? Yeah, cool. So like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the shit, you know. Uh, sign up for coaching if you're, or consultation for coaching. I'll have a call with you and uh, we'll see if coaching is right for you. Description below. Um, it's expensive, but we'll discuss the details there. Um, and then I have courses also. I have a texting book and a day game course if you're interested in just a um, manual, video manual on how to approach girls during the day and ask them out and get them on dates. It's a good place to start. That's what I would do. Even with coaching, I'm going to teach you a lot of what I teach in there. Um, so if you just want to get started on your own, get that day game course and get the texting book and then go off and practice. And if you want to learn really fast or get a lot more in-depth, detailed, tailored coaching, then, of course, sign up for coaching. Anyways, I've rambled long enough. Love you guys. Go fuck yourself. Hector Castillo. Ciao. Bye.